Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Drone Talk and check this out. This is the new type of FPV race quads coming on the market. It is basically a Cine Whoop. Remember the little tiny whoops that you would fly around? I don't know if you're into the FPV hobby. Well, they're making them massive, massive in size. So you can fit a GoPro. This is a GoPro 7 right here and it just straps to the front. The reason these things exist is because you see on the edges here, this is like a bumper system right here because they know you want to fly these very cinematically and go in between objects really tightly. So if it hits something, it just bounces off. And to keep them really high quality for the pilot, it does have the DJI FPV system in it. So you have to use the DJI FPV goggles. So in a future video, you'll see my review of this here, iFlight Bumblebee CD Whoop HD. I'm looking forward to flying this. Oh, and did I show you this? Look, it's the Power Egg X, the little handheld camera that you uh, film with and it turns into a drone. Yes, I just received this from uh, Power Vision. So you'll see a review of the Power Egg coming up. But first, how about we get into Drone Talk, episode three. Here we go. First up, we have the Hubson Zeno 2. Yes, you're all waiting for your Hubson Zeno 2. You know, the Hubson Zeno 2 is pretty cool because Hubson Zeno 1 and Hubson Zeno 1 Pro, no sensors on the bottom, but the 2 has the sensors back here and the battery goes in from the bottom by sliding in through the back. So it's pretty decent. And there's some video footage out right now. You're probably watching this as I'm talking. In the video, Hubson is showing you that the low light capabilities of the Zeno 2 have been enhanced so that you get black blacks and you get bright brights and it looks pretty good. All right, so everybody's going, yeah, that's great, but I pre-ordered one, when's it shipping? Well, they had problems with the app, but the app is now available in the US and Canada, you can get it. So um, it should be shipping soon. You know, I asked Hubson just recently, just like yesterday, I said, hey, when are you guys shipping this thing out to North America? And I received silence. <laughs> Normally I get a response. So I might get a response tonight. And if I do, I'll put a comment in this video. Just check below if there's any update on when this thing is shipping. Next up in discussion is the Autel Evo 2. In my last drone talk, I was discussing, should I get the 8K version or the 6K version? The 6K version is much better than the 8K version because it's got a one inch sensor, high dynamic range, and a much better lens than the one that's on the 8K version. So I hummed and hawed and hummed and hawed, and guess what I went with? I went with the 8K version. Yes, I've pre-ordered the 8K, and you're going, why would you do that? Didn't you want the 6K? I did want the 6K, but here's, here's my methodology. Tell me if it makes any sense. I ordered the 8K, well, pre-ordered it, and by the time I get that, and by the time Autel comes out with the cameras for the 6K cameras and sells them individually so you can upgrade your 8K, by that time, I'm expecting that, well, DJI might have a new drone out that might be incredible. And then I have to make a decision between that new incredible drone and the uh, 6K version of the Evo 2. So anyways, that's my thinking. Now, for all of you that want to pre-order the Evo 2 and get the Evo 2 8K, 6K, or the rugged thing, you know, with the case back here and all that other good stuff. Well, you can actually do that right now. If you check out the DroneWorks website, there's probably other websites as well that are doing this. Uh, I know they're in good contact with Autel and they have everything for pre-order. You put a little down payment and you're in line to get your Autel Evo. And yes, they do ship internationally. So you live in another country, they may just ship to you. Of course, you're gonna have to pay the shipping fee, but hey, you can get your Autel Evo. And my plan is not to buy the case because this case here I made myself. Well, I just bought a, a case from Canada and it's a really good case, probably better than the one that Autel has. But but the foam inside you have to cut out yourself so I cut it out to fit the Evo 1 and I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger to fit the Evo 2. At least that's my plan. Now a lot of you have sent me emails in the past six months to a year always asking the same question about Chinese retailers. You want to buy a drone that I show on my channel and the drone could be from Banggood, Geekbine, Gearbest, AliExpress, TomTop, uh, Cafago. I don't know if there's any other ones. Anyways. You always ask the same question, not all of you, but some of you, is it okay or is it safe to buy from these Chinese retailers? That's one question I received. The next question I receive is, I ordered a drone from one of these Chinese retailers and they didn't ship it to me. Or the next question I receive is, I ordered a drone and it took forever to get to me, like months on end. I'm gonna discuss this right now, so here we go. First thing I have to say is if you buy a drone from the Chinese retailers, other than DJI, do not place in your mind that 
they are a North American or European retailer. They are not. They operate by a different sort of criteria. Let me start by saying stores like Banggood, Gearbest, Geekbind, TomTop, they don't just sell drones. You can buy lipstick, you can buy jewelry, you can buy clothing, you can buy power tools, <laughs> you can buy dog food, you can buy anything. They are basically an Amazon. If you want to think of it that way, they're kind of like an Amazon. And just like Amazon, I know a lot of you are familiar with Amazon, Amazon Prime normally means that Amazon has the product in their warehouse. So when you order Amazon Prime, you pay a little bit of a premium and you get the product within a day or two or even the same day because it's in their warehouse. When you order something that is not in their warehouse, well, that's just another retailer. In other words, me, Captain Drone, I could sell products on Amazon and you would never know they're from me. I would just put a store name, I would sell them on Amazon, you would think you're buying from Amazon, but Amazon would just send me the shipping requirements and I would just fulfill the order and there you go, you get your product. It takes a little longer. So in China, it's the same thing. Since these retail stores sell all sorts of products, they're not all in this one store's warehouse. So it might be some guy down the street or some guy in another city in the country of China that has the product. So when you order it and shipping takes a while, it is up to this other person to ship it out or this other company. One of the biggest complaints I have is that when you order from these Chinese retailers, the shipping takes so long and that's because of what you chose. So when you buy a product from them, check the shipping time. It's in business days, not calendar days. So if it says shipping time is 15 to 18 business days, that means over a month to get to you, not 15 or 18 calendar days. No, no, no. Pay a bit more for shipping and also add tracking because if you don't add tracking, you'll never know where your item is. And the great thing with tracking is if you add it, even if it goes by post, it is still tracked by China Postal. So they use their system. Of course, they're not going to use the United States Postal or a Canadian Postal. It's Chinese Postal. So it leaves them. It's recorded at their end, but they can track it all along to the next country. The problem is you can't go to the United States Postal Service and type in their tracking number. No, you got to type it in the Chinese system. So you have to ask them, what system did you use when you sent my product out? What system can I type this tracking number into to find out exactly where my item is. Now let's say you upgrade the shipping because you want your item really, really fast. You just got to have that drone. Let's say you upgrade it to a courier service like DHL, FedEx, UPS. They'll pick the one that's applicable for their location. If you order that, it will come very fast, but you will be charged customs and duty because those shipping services will charge you customs and duty charges. So you'll have to pay that. Normally, if it goes by postal, it takes quite a long time to get to you, but you do not get charged customs or duty, at least, at least not in my case here in Canada. A lot of people get mad at the Chinese companies because they order a drone and they order three LiPo batteries with it. I do know that in the United States, the United States does not like to get drones without the proper paperwork, which have a lot of LiPo batteries shipped by a certain method. So the United States just returns those drones back to China. And guess what? You don't get your drone. So the only way around that is don't order three batteries. Keep it at like one or two. Now, while we're on the topic of the customs and duty charges that you might be charged for getting the product into your country, a lot of the retailers offer a way around it. So they offer this little thing called tariff, tariff charges. If you click that little box when you buy a product, you're going to pay extra amount of money. Like it could cost you an extra $10, $20, $40, $80, $100. And it's the Chinese way of saying, hey, if you check that box, you pay us the money and you will pay no customs and duty charges when it comes into your country. In other words, you'll pay, you'll pay less than you would have paid. Well, do not check that box and do not pay that money because I've done that many times in the past and 50-50, eh, I still get charged customs and duty charges. And when I go back to these Chinese retailers and say, hey, I got charged customs and duties, uh, but uh, I paid you the money up front. What they do is they say, send us the invoice and we'll pay you back but they don't reimburse you. Say it cost me $40 through them. They don't give me my $40 back. They give me the portion that I was charged by the brokerage firm, but not the processing fees. So I might only get half the amount of money back. So that's what I'm saying. Don't even bother with that item. 
I would suggest as well that you buy these products on Chinese retailers using PayPal. Don't use a credit card or anything else. PayPal is the best. So let's talk about refunds right now because a lot of people worry about that. So it works like this. If you order a product from any of these retailers and it has not shipped, you can cancel it at any time. You get your money back. They give it right back to you. Now, say they ship a product to you and then while it's being shipped to you, you go, I don't want it anymore. Well, they're not gonna give you a refund for obvious reasons because they shipped it to you. You'll have to wait until you either refuse it at the end, like don't accept it, and it goes back to them, then they will refund you or you get the product and then you can ship it back to them. But if you ship it back to them, it's gonna be at your expense. So in cases like that, you may not get a full reimbursement. You might just get a partial reimbursement. And another thing to keep in mind is the time of the year that you order a drone from China. If you order a DJI drone or any type of drone or product from China and it's close to the 25th, the 20th, the 25th of January, it's gonna be delayed by 15 days before it even ships because the Chinese New Year starts, I believe on the 25th of January and runs to the 8th of February and nobody works during that period of time. So for about, eh, maybe about three weeks, nothing's moving in China. So to summarize, I will say that for me, a guy who's been ordering from China for the last five years, products coming into Canada, no issues whatsoever. Everything's been 100% positive. I just had to learn their system and learn how they operate. So I hope that was as clear as mud. But if you still have questions on ordering from China, a little bit worried, well then post the comment below and I'll try to get back to you. And the final topic, which I'll run through really quick, is the FAA proposal on the remote ID for anything unmanned flying in the airspace. When you look at the FAA proposal, they say, hey, hey guys, citizens of the United States, the reason we're doing this is for national security and law enforcement. Well, I would say that most of you are law abiding citizens. So you're going, what the heck are you doing FAA? I will say in Canada, we had a similar situation with our Transport Canada. And when I inquired and went to meetings, I found out that it's just a bunch of guys in a bunch of boardrooms who put together these goofy proposals over a period of about four or six months to try to rectify an issue. So they take a large hammer to smash a little thumbtack to fix the problem. And uh, most times they get it wrong. At least in Canada, they got it wrong almost every time because it's the government. And these guys are not hobbyists. They don't know. They just know the higher level stuff. The FAA is pretty decent in that they let you clarify to them how they got it wrong. So to me, in my opinion, I'm a Canadian citizen, but you know, the, your, your issues are gonna affect me eventually because my Canadian government's gonna look at what you guys do and then it's probably gonna transpose its way into Canada in about five years. So I'm very, very interested in how the FAA and the American citizens go forward with this. And in my opinion, I look at what's being proposed by the FAA and I see that it's not exactly correct. It needs tweaking in a lot of ways. First off, what they're proposing probably makes sense if you fly in a city where you can do a lot of damage, because remember, once again, it's for law enforcement and you know national security. So cities, yes, you need something. But what if you live out in the farm or the country? There's nothing around except cows and horses and trees and squirrels. So wh what, what's the issue there? So that has to be looked at. Next issue is weight. Certainly they have the 250 grams, but honestly, for a lot of the stuff they're proposing, I think it should be higher because if they're looking at, once again, national security or law enforcement, you're gonna look at a drone that can carry some weight and in order for that drone to carry weight, it itself is gonna have to have a big battery, big motors, big props. So those are the drones I would be worried about if I was the government, not the little ones you go buy at Walmart. So I'm sure you, like me, have your own opinions on how this here proposal can be improved. And that's where you have to voice your opinion to the FAA. Link is below to where the little spot is to fill out on the FAA website and pass your opinion on. And guess what? If you're not a US citizen, do it as well because the more opinions the FAA receives, will be the better for all of us in the long run. So let the FAA know how this here proposal is impacting you. In kind words, of course, also let them know that if you make a regulation too restrictive, nobody's gonna follow it. Feel free to share your thoughts below on the FAA proposal. Do you think it's restrictive? Do you think it's perfect? Just as it is being proposed. 
Post those comments below. I'm sure a lot of viewers would like to see what you think. See if there's like-minded people. All right, so I hope you enjoyed episode three of Drone Talk. There'll be an episode four coming up, maybe next week or the week after. Stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And when I have more news, I will post it here on Drone Talk. Take care, catch you in the next video.